few days ago, merong nagpadala sa akin ng isang link to a video that really made me laugh. Doon sa video, ganito ang dating. One day, a husband saw his wife. Sino sort out yung mga damit for laundry. And while she was doing that, he stopped her. Sabi niya, don't touch it. Believe me, my dear, there is some magic happening in this house. Since we got married and started living together in this house, you just leave the dirty clothes there on top of the washing machine and come back the following morning and you will see everything will be fresh, clean, and well folded again. Nagulat yung wife. Kasi alam naman niya, siya yung gumagawa nun. And the husband even took her to the living room and said, You know, every night, I watch television and I make a big mess. Nagkakalat daw siya sa sofa table with his snacks while watching Netflix movies. At pagkatapos daw, he just leaves the place as a big mess and the following morning, malinis na. It's all cleaned up and back in order. Ang sabi pa niya, you know, I think somebody must be sneaking in the house every night to fix up our mess for the following day. Well, the following day, iniwan siya ng misis niya. The wife was gone. The man called the police and reported that somebody must have abducted his wife and that he was suspecting that it must have been the person who sneaked into their house every night daw to clean up his mess. Well, can some people really be so stupid? You might ask. Jesus is driving home this point precisely in our gospel reading. In today's gospel, Jesus is criticizing the Pharisees for their narrow-minded understanding of the law. They were behaving like the ridiculous husband character in that video who enjoyed his rest, totally unmindful of his wife who did all the work silently every night to make sure all the mess that was left by her husband was in order the following day. Well, si Jesus nga gave two funny examples in today's gospel. The first one about David and his soldiers coming home hungry after defending the nation in battle and eating the bread of offering reserved only for the priests. And the second, in the second example, he is asking if the priests who work in the temple on Sabbath day are violating the law. Kami rin nga, di ba? Sa araw ng pahinga ninyo, punong-puno kami ng trabaho. If he had lived in modern times, he would have applied the same question on priests, on doctors and nurses, and many other service providers who have to work, even on Sundays. Ewan kung alam ninyo, in Arab countries, our OFWs, who are working as domestic helpers, they attend Sunday Mass on Fridays. Ang Sunday Mass nila, Friday. Why? Because wala naman silang day off pag Sunday. And for the Muslims, ang day off ay Friday. So you ask the question, are they violating their Sabbath rest? Or let's just talk about every day, araw-araw. 
Di ba? Paggising natin, you notice that the trash, the garbage that we saw piling up in all the street corners the night before, ay wala na sa umaga. It is gone. And the dirty streets, suddenly in the morning, when we wake up, they're all swept clean. Magic ba yun? Of course not. It's not magic. It only means that there were some people who had to stay awake all night so that we can enjoy a clean and orderly environment again the following day. Can you condemn those unseen people as violators of the law if they did all of this on the Sabbath day? Alam nyo, the next time na magbasa kayo ng Bible, when you read the Ten Commandments, whether in Exodus chapter 20 or in Deuteronomy chapter 5, please naman, try to read what the Third Commandment is really saying. Hindi naman niya sinasabing, Thou shalt take a rest. Hindi yun ang sinasabi niya. Hindi lang niya sinabing, Thou shalt observe a day of rest. No. Ang sinasabi niya ganito, Thou shalt keep holy your day of rest. Keep holy. The point is not just to compensate your work with a day of rest. It is rather to consecrate our work, to lift it up, and to find meaning in it as our participation in the work of creation, especially by reflecting on our work in the light of the Word of God like you're doing right now. At ang sabi pa ng third commandment, you have to make sure that your slaves, your workers, including your animals, are able to enjoy a day of rest. That Sabbath was instituted precisely as an act of social justice in favor of the overworked people is very often forgotten. Well, I think something really goes wrong when we reduce the faith to a set of rules to follow. Nawawalan tayo ng spiritual common sense. You know, Jesus circulated with people like the Galilean fishermen, katulad ni na Peter, James, and John who were working even on a Sabbath day in order to make some fish, fresh fish, available for people on their day of rest. And what did Jesus do for people like them, these Galilean fishermen who were working on a Sabbath day? Instead of telling them to stop working, Instead of reminding them of their religious obligation to go to the synagogue and attend the Sabbath services dahil day of rest, ang ginawa ni Jesus, He mingled with them. He sat on their boats and He turned the seashore into an instant synagogue by engaging them in a casual conversation about the Word of God. And he did that even while Peter was washing his nets.